So recently, somebody asked me what microscopes that I use for microsoldering those uh, tiny little SMD components and so on that are co popular today. And I've seen some YouTube channels where people said, oh, I bought a microscope for soldering and they got one of these guys here. And I just first wanted to mention that these guys don't cut it. Now, if you only ever work on small boards, like this um, relatively small board here, it fits on the, on the little platform, then maybe you could get away with it. Uh, although you don't have a great deal of room, you know, to get your soldering iron in. Um, but maybe. I use this thing primarily, I have it on my bench, because if I see a component on here that um, I want to read the number of, See like that one here. It's people tune in a bit there. It's I C four four five. Um, you can uh, see it with with the microscope, and I I can have a quick look at at things like that. That's what I use it for. But I would not use it for soldering. They're not they don't really cut it for that, because. If you get a large motherboard, or even this one here out of a laptop, um, there's only so much you can see with it. It's hard to uh, support the board as well. And, you know, it hits this, this beam over here, and then you, you're not able to get the right angle, perhaps, on, on the uh, when, when you're soldering. On, on the components, stuff like that. So they don't really cut it. They're not made for soldering. They're made for other things. So I thought I would mention that first, that you need a better microscope for that. I have a microscope here, which is uh, suited for in the background. I'll, I'll bring it to the foreground, and we can uh, discuss it some more. Okay, so this is the microscope that I use. It has the camera unit, the lens, the stand, and it is big enough, as you can see, for a large circuit board. And of course, it is all movable. You can actually, you know, move the camera unit quite uh, even a distance away. It can be reconfigured in different ways. Uh, I've got it set up like this with the arm vertically, but you can make this arm actually horizontal, and then um, you know it's 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 quite flexible. There are others that seem to have um, more or less uh, an arm on it, like this uh, magnifying glass here, like that. And I think this guy at Northridge Fix, Alex or something, I think he's he's they have microscopes with something like that, but their microscopes are like very expensive. But you know, which is probably a lot better than this one. But it's like eight hundred dollars or something. And if you make money with it, that is not a problem. But if it's for a hobby, then I found that a little bit more than I wanted to spend. In any case, uh, I also got a bilo lens in here, which actually makes it without that bilo lens, it, the the microscope is very strong. And sometimes you need that if you're look, looking at a very small part of the circuit board and you want high magnification but quite often when you're working with these uh, chips some of the larger chips that have um, you want to be able to see the whole chip when you're working on it so um, I also made a modification to this the I found a light ring these are some clips are made out of paper clips uh, I found that the uh, light light ring was uh, glary, uh, this particular one, and I had that with a small microscope too. The light goes straight down, and what happens is that it seems to bounce back up, and you lose like three uh, three dimensional view of of components and things. Some people say they can't work with these things, and they have these. Uh, microscopes that uh, you know have binoc binoculars on them. Um, 
but I found that um, I, in one of my other videos I showed um, I made up this this thing here. I made a little donut out of a, some filters out of an old TV, and that seems to do the trick for me. I can just put that up there, and it diffuses the light. And while I've got that out there, I'll show what the Bilo lens thing looks like. It is a uh, basically sort of a magnifying glass a bit. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but it works. This is a times five one. So you can see it times five. And uh, so I'm going to put it back on this, but I'll I'll show what it looks like with and without. Also, an interesting thing about these microscopes is that one thing that I didn't realize when I first got it, but I worked out, is that you can actually focus these things at, at different distances by moving the, uh, like you, you will make it like it looks large, but it's totally out of focus, and then you will move the uh, lens up and down, and you, you can focus close by and then if you go all the way the other way with the focusing ring um, it'll be more distance and then you can move the lens up because that's you've got this fine movement here on that knob but if you um, turn this other knob here you can actually lower the whole thing up and down and so I, f I find that um, there is usually two settings that I can focus one further away so you can see more and one closer uh, even with the bio lens on there so I seldomly use it without this bio lens it is uh, good enough for me to use and um, let me put this back on I'll just stop recording for a sec while I do that so this little plastic um, cover that I made up with that filter in it the, the actual cover is actually from a little yogurt container. <laughs> it's just, just a clear plastic. Uh, I was going to make a cover for it with a 3D printer, but then I thought I, I uh, had that laying around and I thought, hey, look at that, it fits exactly. So I just cut a little groove in it and made up some little clips from paper clips to clip it on and um, it works just fine. So that's why I'm, I'm keeping it like that. So let's turn the microscope on and you'll be able to see what it does. Okay, so now we've got a picture on the microscope. And uh, just about as sharp as it gets, I guess. Now, as you can see with this particular lens here, uh, and we have, you know, we can change the brightness and also what I this is with that filter on there and it works pretty good now but before there would be a lot of glare there um, let me see where are we so this actually is the smallest tip I have for my soldering iron and it is actually quite small but these are very small components. There are actually components that are one size smaller than those, as you can see on this on this uh, little sample. I can find it under there. So. This is what we were just looking at for components of that 0402 size. And they are that big. See, there's the uh, soldering iron tip. Oh, see, that, that, that big. But there is actually one size smaller. There's like a grain of sand. They are so small. It is um, 0201. Any case, as I was saying, with I'm using this uh, Barlow lens on there right now, and I found that I, I usually use it, leave it on there. Let me find a chip. Here is a chip here. 
Well, let's turn it around so we can. As you can see, the chip only barely fits. So I found that I can actually zoom out like this with that lens, let's say, you know, to about that size, and I will just adjust the height of the um and I can I can focus in again and I actually get a larger view this would be the view that I would use to solder the uh, pins on this thing you can kind of you know drag the folding line tip across like that so I use it with that 0.5 by low lens all the time because There's the uh, I can even zoom out further, I think. And I can raise the whole caboodle up even higher, you see, and I can still focus in. So it it all depends what I'm doing. It all depends what I'm doing. Uh, how I would, how I want to um, uh, adjust that, you know, for larger components, smaller components, it's very flexible. So one lens does it all. It has a zoom function, and you just raise the whole thing up. Right now, you can't even see it on the uh, on the on the other little camera here. It's it's kind of off the picture but it does, that's how high I've, I've listed it up in order to get that far away from it but while we are at that subject um, let's lower it down again Okay, so we can see that now. Now, another thing that I use, I've got these dinky little um, little light here. It's, it's like a book reading light. You can actually put batteries in it, but I'm running it off uh, of a USB connector. And made a little bracket up, and I hook it up onto the thing here, and then sometimes turn them on. I can light up a certain area if I want to little flexible arms on it. I can actually use that to um, light up the area and I can actually turn the ring light down to make it brighter. So it all depends what kind of circuit board it is, how much glare it has. I will adjust the various lights that I have accordingly in order to get a good picture. So this is pretty good. Get to those components, and uh, that. but that's basically about how I use the microscope. And where I got it from is from Amazon, and it actually came as a bundle. You see, um, the camera, the light, and the lens, and then I, I think I bought it as a bundle like that. It has to stand with it. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I, I I think that there was a whole bundle there, but uh, this is the stand for it, and that's the ring light, and this, of course, was the camera and. The lens is over here, and 
I think when I bought it, it was maybe around, I don't know, 300 odd dollars or something for the whole kit and caboodle. I usually wait until things are on sale and stuff like that. Like my uh, Snapmaker 3D printer, I bought it last Christmas when it was on sale. A lot cheaper than what you can buy them now. Anyway, so that is kind of what I use. I thought maybe that was of some interest to somebody. Let me get rid of the... Um... Picture there. So... That works pretty good for me. Okay, so that's all I've got. This microscope here does the job for me. And it is probably the minimum thing that you can get as a professional level as well. I use this microscope and I'm pretty pleased with it. I have done some good work with it already and We'll leave it at that. Got some new videos coming up. I'll, I'll have an update on um, soldering irons. I got this this new soldering iron with that new soldering station that I have. I don't know if you can see it up there. Yeah, over here. This is the uh, soldering station. I'm pretty uh, pleased with it. It is ATTEN or something, ATTEN. It's Chinese. I think they've made a copy of uh, some of the Weller equipment. Actually, probably the same factory where they make the Weller stuff. And an equivalent Weller or a JBC station would cost 800 to over $1,000. And this one is just $200. So it is very good quality and I recommend it and um, of course I do have the T12 stations here as well which also are very good this is a you know got a what I was using here is a T12 tip and we'll go to those things and uh, because these these things are cheap I buy those as kits I build them up myself they usually are somewhere like between 30 and 40 dollars and they work very well anyway I think we'll leave it at that and until next time.